Hello. So we are back. But this time, let's start for beginners and learn motherboard repairs. This is a long video. This is not a 10 minute video. So my advice is get relaxed. And uh, I just want to share with you whatever I know, I will share. And I want to say thank you because this video is for members only. And many years, I didn't give back anything to members. But, you know, it's time, uh, you know, to show some uh, gratitude for your support. Okay, good. Now, why laptop motherboards? Well, the, the laptops are kind of the future. I mean, you know, it's no comeback from something like that. Everyone wants the computer to be mobile. And yet they are getting faulty quite often. I mean, the 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 faulty rate probably is a lot higher compared with a desktop. I mean, obviously, just because it's mobile and uh, everything on the motherboard is small as possible. Now, if you have electronic knowledge. That's a must. If you don't have electronic knowledge and you are just starting from absolutely zero, I will uh, post <coughs> on my other channel uh, a, a electronic course from zero to advance over the five months. Yeah, in five months you should be advanced. Um, I haven't uploaded anything yet, but it will happen. Yeah, I'm recording, I'm teaching. <laughs> you will see, you will see. But yeah, that's the idea. The idea is from zero to advance in five months. That's the idea. Okay. Now, the way how I'm doing is uh, on a different way compared with the school. School is a lot of theory, but theory it will not help you when you meet something like that. So for a beginner or for someone which didn't fix laptops, what is here? Here is a puzzle with a lot of components, you know, the manufacturer threw them there, solder there, but it's just a puzzle. It means nothing. So this picture means exactly nothing. Yeah, nothing. And uh, to be able to fix laptops, yeah, and we are focusing on fixing without schematics because schematic is hard to find. And even if you have, even if you found schematic, um, it's you need time. You need time. Yeah. So you don't understand nothing here. Now the idea is to recognize parts of the circuit. And when you recognize something and you are sure, okay, I know what is that circuit, you can test it. The diagnose is the most important step, yeah? To diagnose right a, a fault. Yeah, that, that's, that's very important. That's very important because based on the diagnose, based on the current reading, and I, I would insist, you know, people, and not only people, even myself, yeah? Learning electronic over the years, uh, I start counting on, on voltage. You yeah? always try to follow the voltage, but uh, you realize the voltage depends on the current, of course, according to the ohm blow. But if you're just focusing on the current, you can see a lot more compared if, if you're focusing on the voltage. I mean, both are important, are two important things. But I start following the current a lot more in the last years and it's you can predict more things from just reading the current you always see me on my videos always watching on the current. i never watch the voltage you know i never i always watch the current and i'm watching what the motherboard is doing and uh, what is happening it's very easy to get lost i mean i i i, I look on the comments of the video and the people are getting lost let me give you an example. It's just a short example. Just a short example. Let me find the video. 
Okay, on the videos, I'm doing things which I don't realize. Only if I watch the video, I realize what I'm uh, what I'm doing. You know, I'm doing by you know by instinct. I'm not realizing on that moment. So let me give, give you an example. <clears throat> this video, which was made like a few days ago, well, let's pay attention a little bit. Yeah, what I'm doing. So check here. Yeah, check here. Let's see, we have here a bias chip. And it's no voltage. What okay. we're looking, 19 it's volts fair. and 3.3. Check here. The power button is no here. So I'm checking the voltage on the coil. Nothing. 1.8. That's good. Nothing. 1 1.8. 1.8. 1.5. 1.5. 1.4. 1 Why? What is this? What about main power rail? One second. The main power rail is 19.1. Okay, she just 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 ignoring. Yeah, just ignoring. I move forward. Yeah. On the other side of the board. The trying to follow the path. Yeah. Trying to don't get lost, you know? Okay, I just ignore the fact that it's a power supply with changing voltage and just ignoring that. Because I'm following the path, yeah? Main power rail is present, it's present, 19. Then we have to find the 3.3, yeah? So we are ignoring anything else, yeah? We are ignoring and try to follow a path, okay? And indeed, on that video proved uh, that coil which has that change in voltage was... Uh, after I replaced the EC chip which was shorted, I found that chip which was not soldered properly, you remember? that uh, chip was providing 5 volts, 3.3 volts, then 5 volts LDO and 3.3 LDO. But I'm just giving you an example, yeah? When you know what you have to do, you are ignoring, you know, the things which you, it will distract you. You know what I mean? I mean, I could easily stop on that point and try to figure it out what's happening, but you can't do it like that. You'll get lost. You have to follow a precise things. Yeah, check that, check that, check that, and then you, you you try to grab some conclusions. Okay, good, good. So I'm assuming you have some electric knowledge. Oh, it does good. That's good. Uh, now the faults on the motherboard can be hardware or software or firmware like BIOS, like EC, like uh, Thunderbolt film or firmware. Uh, my advice is because I moved, you know, before, before start working from home with my own business. At work where I were there, I never did a BIOS. Nothing, nothing related with the firmware. Uh, because I had no interest, and uh, the second is because I didn't have time. But start working from home is like, I will say probably like 30% from the jobs. Maybe, yeah, like 30% from the jobs are BIOS related issue. So, uh, so I will say apart from the tools you, are, you have, you have a power supply, you have a solder iron, uh, try to grab a programmer. And the programmer I'm using is very good. I mean, I work for a while and it's very good. Now, the, Re the Re Revel Pro, this one, I believe it's around 100 pound, but it's fantastic. It's, I mean, if you buy something cheap, like I had before, remember what I have? I had before that one, the CH431, I believe, right? Yeah, that one you do, you cannot. It's not auto detecting the BIOS voltage, and this is the biggest advantage because the BIOS is like I found like half half BIOS to be like 1.8, it can be 3.3, and this one is auto detecting the BIOS. I mean, probably trying with 3.3, but has a current limit, and actually, you can set up the current limit from the menu. You have 100 milliamps and 150. Anyway. You've done something wrong. You have a 1.8 volts BIOS, and you set up 3.3. Then uh, it will auto detect. It will say over current, and nothing wrong will happen. You switch back to 1.8, and you, 
uh, you can, uh, you know, work with your BIOS. Uh, the SVOD programmer, this, no, I didn't even took out the half of money I pay for it. So EC uh, programmer, I don't know. I don't know what to say, but it's, I don't know that many EC chips, uh, like faulty EC chips. And uh, even if you have faulty EC chips, uh, there are a lot of EC chips, they get programmed in self, in the, in the circuit, after you solder them. So I don't know what to say, but the BIOS programmer, 100%. Uh, then, you need tools, yeah? So first, a linear power supply. A linear is important. I, I, I always said that. It's not like I'm the old type of person and I'm used to use linear. We have a lot of advantage. And one of them is the clicking feature, yeah? You click, you, you know, that even this, digi this digital uh, display, you can't see, it's slow. Probably the resolution is like two times per second or something like that. But clicking, you know, it's immediately, it will give you like, you know, a diagnostic of a motherboard. The second thing, the linear power supply, the internal resistance is very high compared with our switching one. It will forgive you in case you do some mistakes. Now, working with a Caralimi, that's a must. Yeah, so if you just set up, just stick there like, I don't know, never work on a motherboard with over let's say 2.5 amps in the best case scenario. Many times I go lower. Uh, another tool is oscilloscope. Oscilloscope, I, I got it very soon, like probably like one month ago, and it's, it's fantastic for a simple job, yeah, to find out if your chipset is good, because you'll have chipsets which they are not blow up, yeah, like, okay, wow, this is blow up. You'll not see a blow up. But it's just that. And uh, at that chipset, most of the time, but not always, it's not reading the BIOS. And with the oscilloscope, you can actually see if it's reading the BIOS or not. I mean, you can stick the probe on nearly any pin. And when you power up that board, you will see if it's accessing, and you have clock and data, if, you ac if it's accessing the BIOS. And you have a short period of time, probably one, two seconds, the chipset is trying to read the BIOS. So uh, oscilloscope, yeah, you can buy any oscilloscope. I have my one, but this one is overkill. Yeah, I mean, not only it's expensive, but it's overkill uh, for this kind of particular job. So you can have even this brand, uh, the cheapest one, I, I believe it's around 100 pounds, you know, the one which is going up to 100 megahertz or 50, something like that. Okay, I'm just saying, of course, any oscilloscope, it'll do the job. I believe those chips work, are working around uh, 30 megahertz. I believe that's the, the, the clock. Now, checking components on the motherboard. Now, with a multimeter, yeah, cold check. You know what? You see me a lot on my videos playing with the power supply on the motherboard. Try to avoid something like that. I mean, I'm doing it because I'm doing it. But try to avoid because you can create damage which cannot be undo. You know what I mean? So uh, you, the rule is you cannot use the power supply if you don't know exactly what's going on there, where you want to come with the power supply. So uh, like general rule, avoid the power supply. Now, checking the board with the multimeter, that's a good thing. Yeah, it, 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 you will start to figure out the resistance of some coil and what that coils are doing and where they are connected and things like that. So uh, what you can check and always you check, yeah, you don't check, let's say a capacitor like that. Okay, you don't check like that. Because that capacitor can do something else and cannot be connected to ground. And I found on my videos, I don't remember the video. Usually I know by default to ignore this kind of capacitors, but I'm not doing it. Usually I'm doing it compared with the ground. So always compare with the ground. So with the ground, you can uh, test. <coughs> I mean, on one side, it will beep because it's ground. Yeah, it will be zero ohms because it is ground. 
But when that, that happened, you know, on the, on the other side, you know, there is a power rail. Yeah, like on this case, we have like 14 ohms on this power rail. Or if you are, let's say, but you don't know yet to check the main power rail, you have zero ohms on one side, and on the other side, you have infinite resistance. Yeah, that's mean, okay, the power rail having infinite resistance means it's not shorted. So always compare with the ground. Always compare with the ground. Now, of course, probably you know already, you cannot have shorted things on the motherboard. When you have like coils, like 150 ohms, and uh, yeah, probably this is like, uh, probably this is like one volt power supply of the, of the chipset. You can have 14 ohms, which can be the chipset. And then you have the CPU, you have like 4.2 ohms on the CPU. And those coils are on, the, are on the parallel mode, but this is not short. I mean, if you have four, four uh, ohms on the coil, that doesn't mean it's short. So those are from CPU. Then you have uh, different coils, they have infinite resistance, infinite resistance, infinite resistance. Yeah, so that's how you test. That's how you test. Now, in order to fix a lot, you have like a high su success rate. All you have to do, and this is simple, focus on your uh, 90 volts power rail and the 3.3. .3. If, if you are able to fix those two things, yeah, you're able to fix probably 80% like from the laptop because most of the faults, they are coming from here, from the main power rail and from the 3.3. .3. Uh, another important aspect, try and uh, take the jobs like dead boards. A dead board, you have a very high chance to fix it. A board which is coming on with no picture, there is a very low chance to fix it. Just because board coming on does mean the signals are good. The power good as signals are good, does mean the power supplies they are up and running. And you have a a frozen board because of something, because of the CPU, because of the chipset, because of the ECG, because of the BIOS, and you don't know why. And you can't fix it, or RAM memory, or yeah, you, you, know, you know the story. Now, indeed, and uh, I, I have a video on the channel on the boards with uh, coming on a picture with the uh, onboard RAM, you can disable the RAM. And I have a video there uh, how to disable that RAM. That's something what you can check. Yeah, what you can check more. You can check a BIOS, yeah? A BIOS on those days, it's quite easy to be found. I mean, if you are on this business to fix motherboards, uh, the first thing what you have to do, and you have to learn, you, ha you have to learn to use it. Uh, join our forum and also join our Discord. You have in the description of the Discord, uh, address try to learn and work with discord because on discord you can find here we have like schematics we have bios we have bios me repair repair and you can find a lot a lot of bios schematics and also you can request a bios me repair or clean we have uh, we have i uh, hear people you know helping the others sharing files um, in case it's something uh, which we don't have, yeah, there are websites like uh, Vinafix, which is a paid, it's, it's, it's a paid website for BIOS and schematics. But you don't have to get a subscription, you just have to put a request on our Discord, and uh, I know. I know few people, they have access there. I know one moderator have access to that website and they can give you what you are looking for. 
Also, I seen a lot of uh, schematic and bios on the Bad Caps forum. So uh, basically, just searching on Google, you can get uh, a BIOS file or a schematic. So having a dead board, I mean, a board which is coming on but no picture, is not much what we can do. So you do a BIOS? Yeah, you can do a BIOS. Uh, you change the RAM memory? Yeah. But not much than that. Just before, uh, from a simple reason, you don't know from what is the problem, and you can't check. No one can check. You have the, the you have communication, RAM memory with the CPU. You have the CPU with the chipset. Then you have the chipset with everything. Yeah, and trust me, the chipset. Someone write on the comments. Sorry, you know the chipset. You if you are looking like like a bad, you are looking at the chips and it can get burned. And that's that's right. Even playing with a USB. You can burn your chipset. Okay, so uh, that's why getting boards which are not coming on, that's you have a higher chance to fix them just because they're most likely it's a power issue, a power problem, a power rail missing, a shorter power rail. Now you can start from somewhere. Yeah, you can start from somewhere. The easiest part to start is from the charging port. And uh, the charging port is a very good is a very good place to start. And the way how you follow the power, yeah. I mean, okay, you don't stick a probe on the ground, yeah. Let's say you check with the you check with the with the with the, with the charger and nothing happened. You can very easily follow the the you always follow the plus. Yeah, you follow the plus. Always the red uh, wire is the plus. You have two red wire because they're in parallel to carry more current. You always follow the red wire. Well, let's have a look together and follow the red wire. Okay, this is a nice design. I mean, you have the charging port, you can see it here, okay? You have two red wires, you can see the trucks are together. You have two black wires, that's ground. So we don't care about the ground, we care about the plus. You see that black thing, it's an inductor, basically a wire, nothing else. You can, uh, you can think on your mind like it's a wire. Then it's going to the first MOSFET, yeah, you can see you have Two MOSFETs here, first MOSFET, second MOSFET. Okay, the idea is that the current has to follow those two MOSFETs. Okay, let me plug a charger on this board and let's check together. I'm not going to insist on this because uh, I do have a lot of videos on channel with this, uh, how to diagnose this power input circuit. So I plug the power onto the motherboard. And uh, we are checking voltage now. We are seeing one prompt to the ground, and the input voltage is 19.6. You can see on the screen. Good. So then we have the first MOSFET. Then the power is going. Those MOSFETs are together. Yeah. And it's going on the output here. Yeah, 19.6. You can see. So this circuit is good. It's passing the both MOSFETs. Yeah. Good. On the gate, what do we have on the gate? Hmm? Check on the gate what we have. We have 9 volts. So basically you are not checking what is on the gate. You are checking between the source and the gate. And we have 9 volts. Okay? Good. Here on this MOSFET, we have 17 volts. So you see on this case, what do we have here? We have channel P MOSFETs. But most of the time, you will see on the motherboards, channel N MOSFETs. Now, you know what? Now I cannot be that dodgy. But on the past, I did, let's say I had a problem with the MOSFETs. I can just remove the MOSFET, short the MOSFET. But on the past, it was still working. The battery was still charging fine. But on those days, uh, you have the power management chip, which usually it's a big U chip, has a short circuit MOSFET detection. So if you short the MOSFET, it will not charge. 
okay so it's better to fix this circuit and i will not insist because i have a lot of videos about this now regarding the main power rail there are two types of motherboards let's check together so soon as you seen your voltage is passing the the mosfets you can actually check the main power rail so the main power rail is very easy to check you have paths like uh, you have coil, you have MOSFET, you have input capacitor. So let's check together the input capacitor and we have 13.5. So from where do we have 13.5 volts? Because here we have 19. Is that because this is the design, like the MacBook designs? You have a big power rail which is supplying the main power rail for the, for the whole board. On this case, on this case, Yeah, you have a you have a MOSFETs here. Yeah, I believe the MOSFETs are switching that coil. But let me check to be sure. Let's check together. So we have two MOSFETs here. We have nineteen here. So those are dual MOSFETs. Here we have, okay, I know what we have. Yeah, 13.5. So you see on the output of this MOSFET, we have 13.5. And here on the middle, it's a coil between this MOSFET and here. It's a coil, and they are bouncing that coil and it's creating uh, the main power rail, which on this case is 13 volts. So this is this is quite rare. I mean, usually on expensive laptops, you will find uh, you will find something like that, where the the main power rail has a special designed power supply, which is creating this. Like we seen like one video ago, we have like that Intersil chip on a HP laptop, which was not working. Good. Now let's move to another board. Let's check another one. It's good to see different design. Like this board. Okay, this board, I believe the board started. It's taking 250 milliamps. On this board, the same story. Let's try to identify the input circuit. So you have one MOSFET here, I check here the plus, yeah, yeah, so this is the plus, it's coming to the inductor, this inductor is just used here to, in case the charging port is parking, it will eat the spark, it has zero ohms, it's like a carbon resistor. So it's going to the first MOSFET, then from the second MOSFET, probably it's going on the other side of the board, let me check. Yeah, it's going on the other side of the board. It's going here, and from here, it's going again. So it's coming here. Lol, you know what is this? You know, I see now. You know what? This, this, this is good board. This, those are boards which I fix them. You know what is that? Yeah, this board is working. You know what is this? You don't, right? Huh, let's take a small break. So what is that? Is the protection for the data line on the charging port. Okay, makes sense. Yeah, check the charging port. Yeah, now it's making sense why that thing is blow up. So let's check together the middle pin, which is the data pin. Yeah. The middle pin. Check here, so the middle pin has zero ohms. That's mean the middle pin is coming here, right? Okay, so you last sorry, so what does mean? That's mean if this is blow up, it will not work. No, this board it is working. So if, if this is blow up, it will work. If it's shorted, no, it will not work. No, it's, it's not shorted. But usually this is protecting 
the data line. And in case something happens, it will get shorted. But in this case, uh, this is gone. It's connected only to ground. You can see it has two solders to ground. And if you remove it, it will work great. Yeah. Yeah, and the data lines is going here. Yeah, so I have to rebuild this track. Yeah, give me one second. Let me rebuild this track. <clears throat> But this board didn't have a problem with the uh, with the data line. You will find the the laptops not charging. Yeah, they are working with the charger but not charging. Yeah, this is one of the reasons why they are doing it because of this protection and I found it burn on many laptops and all you have to do is to remove it not sure how can you replace it and uh, I believe it's just a center dial nothing more than a center dial but let me fix this if, if we are here on this point because those words are a customer job. Perfect. Okay, so we rebuild the truck. So now I'm sure my data line, it will be fine. I'm not sure how I miss this. Perfect. Okay, so uh, we are speaking about what? We are speaking is going on the other side of the board. Let me plug the charger. So I plug the charger. Let me switch to voltage. So uh, the second MOSFET is coming here. Yeah, you can see it's 19, then it's going to the current sensor. And from here we have our main power rail. On the MOSFETs, you can see the, mo the, the voltage is coming on those three pins. That means even this one probably is a channel P MOSFET. Yes, yeah, so this is a channel P. The other one probably is a channel P also. Now, the main power rail on this case, let's see. So the main power rail has 13.7, same story. Same story like the other board, are the same? No, are not the same. <laughs> yeah, interesting. So the same story like the other board, look there, 13.7. So this coil is switched by four MOSFET and is creating the main power rail. Okay, let's show a different board. Uh, this one, we don't have the charging port, but we do have the charging port on this one. Okay, let me plug the charger. Good, and the board is starting. Uh, okay, the, the input circuit on this one uh, is very simple. I mean, you can see, you can spot it. So you have the charging port, and from the charging port, you have that black inductor, and you have a big, big truck which is going to those two MOSFETs. You can see? So... How we can check this? 
Okay, so here we have two MOSFETs, and on the input we have 19.5, and on the output, yeah, on the current sensor, we have 18.6. 19.5, 18.6. Okay, that's weird. And on the gate we have 19.2. This, this, this is not working. I can't believe it. I fixed those boards. This is crazy. So here you have 19.2. You cannot lose power on the MOSFETs. And here you have 19.5. Okay, because of the gate. Yeah, because the gate is 19. It's not supposed to be 19. It's supposed to be 25, 26 volts. I can't believe I missed this. So this board is working. You see it's taking 360 milliamps. If I put a... Uh, RAM memory and I check on the HDMI this board is working but you cannot have you see this is a fault it's, it's still working because it's check here it's losing it's losing current it's losing voltage actually it's not losing that much current it's losing voltage 18.5 now why is that because on the gate we don't have 25 we have only 19.2 uh, can be a shorted MOSFET let's check together if it's a shorted MOSFET or a dead BQ chip So this MOSFET is good. This MOSFET, check there, 1 ohm. You can see? 1 ohm. And with the gate, 2 ohms. You can see, check with the gate, 2 ohms, 1.6 ohms. So this MOSFET is shorted. And obviously, those gates are together, so probably this gate is shorted also. And you all think, whoa, this MOSFET is shorted. It's not, because those gates are together. But this MOSFET is gone. I can't believe it. I mean, I didn't start the video to fix boards, but those boards is, are supposed to be good. You know what I mean? I mean, those are customer jobs. I charge the money already. And I said, you know what? I can do some videos. And those boards are tested. Yeah? Are tested. So you see, even myself, I can be wrong. Even myself, I can be wrong. Let's remove this MOSFET and test. Yeah, we remove the MOSFET. But you see, you understand the difference between channel P and channel N MOSFETs. You have all four pins together on a channel N MOSFET. On a channel P MOSFET, you have only three pins and four here, yeah? So this MOSFET, check there, one ohm. So this MOSFET is gone. Let me find another MOSFET. I'm really sorry, that was not the idea of this video. To fix motherboards. Yeah, I found it, I found it. Let me grab a MOSFET. Okay, so that's the MOSFET. Let's solder the MOSFET. Good, so the MOSFET is soldered on place. Now let's check together, yeah? I will plug the charger again. Let me cool down the, the board a little bit. Okay, let me plug the charger and let's check one more time. You can see it's taking the same amount of current, yeah? So it's no change on the board uh, functionality apart probably from the charging the battery, yeah? So before, 100% was not charging the battery. I, I mean, most likely. So what do we have now? Now, we have on the gate, check that. Yeah, so you have an OL on the gate. Let me raise the, the range on the multimeter. So what voltage do we have on the gate? Check on the screen, 24.6, yeah? What voltage do we have on this gate? 24.7. Now, the most important aspect, what is the input voltage of this circuit and the output voltage? So the input voltage is, 19.5 and what is the output so the output voltage is 19.490 yeah so we are not losing voltage on this circuit we're losing like 10 millivolts but that's all okay so you see this is a simple circuit 
So Sorin, how we are checking the main power rail on this case? Because uh, we start, uh, you know, trying to figure out the main power rail. You, the CPU is hot, proper hot. Okay, the main power rail on this laptop is, let's see, the ground. Try to make some space. is 19.4 you can see you can see so on this board we don't have a special design power supply which is creating the main power rail so we have 19 19 volts okay and this is the first thing what you have to check you have to restore or check the main power rail you have to check and restore actually now this board is on it's taking 370 milliamps if i put a ram memory and the HDMI, we can have output. Um, this is the first step, actually, to check if your main 19 volts power rail is present. If it's 19, maybe it has a different, uh, uh, maybe it has a dedicated power supply. One second, this is the same board is the same board but we don't have the charging port let's move the charging port it is the same board yeah it's the same board it's exactly the same board yeah so then it's no point to check then it's no point to check i'm just try you know, to make you understand, you know, at least the input circuit on this video. So you don't have to spend time to search on a schematic. Schematic is time. I mean, whatever I'm doing with electronics, I'm always, you know, calculating, you know, the time I spend, the money I have to ask for the repair. So uh, I'm trying to make the thing short as possible. But grabbing a schematic just for the first two MOSFETs one actually is very simple to check to see if, yeah. So what we know, if the first MOSFET has three, three pins, yeah, what it is, is channel P. If it's channel P on the gate, uh, you've seen, yeah, a few volts there. If it has four pins, then it's a channel N. If it's a channel N, it has to have 25 volts on the gate checked from the ground. If you check from the source, you have around 6 volts. Yeah, if you check the source, compare with the gate. So that's the input circuit. Now, this should be your main thing, you know, first restoring the main power rail. And that's important because everything else, all those power supplies from here, um, they are taking power from your main power rail. Okay? Great. Now, most likely you'll have different type of board. And you'll, uh, ah, sorry, okay, but how can I find my, uh, my MOSFET, my first MOSFET? And that's very simple. Keep in mind, always, yeah, I'll switch the multimeter and the beeping. Always, the plus from the charging port, it will go to your first MOSFET, and that's all. Yeah, always on any board. So uh, it's very simple. You go on the plus of the charging port, yeah, and it's going to the first MOSFET, right? It's going to the car to the inductor, and from the inductor, it's going to your first MOSFET. So that's how you find your first MOSFET, and after the first MOSFET, must be a second MOSFET. On this case, is this one. On a different board, uh, on the same way. So what do we have here? Oh, we have the board is like that, but that's not important. Assuming you don't know actually this track is going and those are two MOSFETs. So your MOSFET, it will always beep with the plus from the charging port. You can see. It's not beeping with the ground. Yeah, it's not beeping with the ground. It's beeping with the plus from the charging port. Always. 
So that's how you find your first MOSFET. After you find the first MOSFET, then the next to him, you will have a second MOSFET. And after the second MOSFET, you will have your main power rail. In the case of this kind of board, after the second MOSFET, you will have, yes, 19 volts, and it's going to the unique power supply, which is creating the main power rail, where actually you have four MOSFETs, or like on this case, on this case, you don't have four MOSFETs, you have two dual MOSFETs. So inside of this black thingy are actually two MOSFETs. So you have two, with two, you have four MOSFETs. The configuration of this one, I'll show you the configuration of this power supply. What do we have? We have two channel P MOSFETs, yeah, the input MOSFET. So you have one, you have two, it's optional. And here you have four MOSFETs. You have one, two, three, four, and the coil in the middle, yeah? So what we have on this board, we have dual MOSFET. That means we have two MOSFETs on that one capsule and another capsule with another two MOSFETs. So that's the input circuit. On the other board, on, what, uh, on one we replace the MOSFET, yeah, on this one. I'll show you the configuration on this one. Yeah, I'll show you the configuration. One second. Is this one. You see the arrow is pointed different, that's mean a channel and MOSFET. And on the say you have two MOSFETs, you have first MOSFET and you have the second MOSFET, and after the second MOSFET you have your main power rail. And you see the gates are together, that means if one MOSFET is shorted, it's fully shorted, the other MOSFET gate with source, it will be shorted, right? Yeah. Okay. Good. Now we learn about the difference between channel P and channel N MOSFETs. We learn how we the, how we can identify our first MOSFET, yeah? B pin. Always the plus is going to your first MOSFET. Always. Now how can I identify the main power rail? Okay, let's have a look on this board. So what do we have here? We have a bunch of coils. Yeah, you 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 watch, you follow the coils. Okay, so you have you follow the coils, and what you have here, you have the coil. Here is the output of the coil, so you you that's you, you don't touch this, yeah. And you have the input, and on the input always you will have capacitors. You can see, so those are some drivers. So it's the driver with the MOSFET inside. Okay, that's what we have here. This is a new board with uh, MOSFET and driver on the same capsule. So first, what, what, what we check? First, you connect one probe to the ground. Yeah, the ground, meaning any screw, any bit, you see ground, ground. And we are finding the ground on the capacitors. So this is the ground. If this is the ground, this is the plus, okay? So we know this is ground. So what we are doing now, we know this is plus. Yeah, we are sticking the ground to the plus and we are checking with the other capacitors. Yeah, with this one is beeping. You can see those are together, it's one track. With this one is beeping, with this one is beeping. Yeah, check here. With this one is beeping, with the plus from this capacitor is beeping. That means this is my main power rail. Here is beeping, here is beeping. So, this is my, uh, this is my main power rail. Here is beeping, here is beeping. This is my main power rail. Uh, this, is, uh, this is how you find the main power rail on a board with uh, this dedicated power supply. But even on the other board, you are finding the plus on the same way. So you say, sorry, but the main power rail is going only here? No, it's going on many places, yeah? Let's check where it's going also. And on this way, you draw the schematic on your mind. It's going here? No, it's not going here. It's going here. Check here. Zero ohms. So here I should have plus uh, what was on the... It's going here. 
So here I should have nine, no 19. Uh, what was the voltage? 13 volts, right? You can see this test point. They are using those test points so you can uh, disconnect and isolate a circuit, a part of the circuit. Now, what is going also? Let's try to find another power supply. We found another one. It's going here, right? No, it's not going here. Okay. So probably it's going on the input of this. It's going here. It's going here, you can see. Now here you have another test point. You can isolate this power supply. So you can see it's going here. So that's how you find your main power rail. Now let's grab the other board. Okay, so this board, which the whole main power rail is 19 volts. Now this is very simple, yeah? Your main power rail, it's after the two MOSFETs, yeah? So after those two MOSFETs, you have a current resistor always, and this is your main power rail. But also, you can find your main power rail on the same way, yeah? So let's find some coils. And yeah, even this one, it's a new one. So first, the ground on the capacitor, yeah? This is not ground, this is ground. Okay, so if this is not ground, that means this is plus if, if it's beeping, we may any other points like this one, yeah? Plus of the capacitor, this plus. Uh, let's try more. This driver here on the bottom, but you can't see it. This one, plus, yeah? This capacitor is on the main power rail, you can see. Here another capacitor. Yeah, this one is on the main power rail. Let's check more. This one is on the main power rail, you can see. What do we have here? We have more chips here. This one is on the main power rail, you can see. So that's how you find your main power rail. So your main power rail is the biggest power rail from a laptop motherboard and it's going on different places now when it's beeping from point to point but not ground that's why you have first to check with the ground because ground is nearly everywhere 99 from the motherboard is ground yeah so first you have to get rid of the ground and then okay one side of the capacitor is grounded then on the other side can be the main power rail can be can be if it's beeping with every power supply capacitor, yeah? So that's how you know that's your main power rail. If it's not beeping, means you are on the wrong capacitor. The capacitor is doing something else. That is not your main power rail, okay? Uh, same on the other board, like this new one with a dedicated power supply, yeah? On the same way, if it's going here, it's going here, it's going here, then it's going here, it's your main power rail. Of course, the main power rail, this one is not coming from the from the output of uh, those two MOSFETs, yeah? But if you are able to identify this part of the circuit, it's a big step forward. So that does mean you should be able to identify your first MOSFET and the second MOSFET, yeah? Then you should be able to identify actually every every coil, yeah, is driven by a chip or MOSFETs. If it's a new one like these ones, those are new. They have drivers. You have a chip which inside has the driver and two MOSFETs. That's what is inside of those chips. But the old style motherboard, and I don't have here. Let me find one. Old style motherboard. Uh, you have MOSFETs, yeah? You have MOSFETs. I believe those are dual MOSFETs, yeah? No. You have simple MOSFETs, two MOSFETs, one coil. Two MOSFETs, one coil. Two MOSFETs, one coil. How hard is to find the main power rail here? Very simple. On the same way, first you get rid of the ground. Let's get rid of the ground. From ground, here is ground, you can see. So that's mean on the other side is no ground, on the other side is plus. Then from this plus, with this plus, no. 
here with this plus, so this is going here. Then it's going here. Then probably is going should go here. But I don't know what chip is this. It's going here. Oh, you can't see, sorry. So from here is going here also. Okay. Then it's going where? It's going here. Yeah. So on every point of this, you should have your main power, which is 19 or depends. Then it's going where? <coughs> then it's going here. We should have a power. So we a driver. Yeah, we do have some drivers here. So it should go here somewhere. Yeah, it's going here. You can see. Then it's going. Where is going? You know where it's going? Where do you think it's going? Here. We have first MOSFET, second MOSFET on the current sensor. So if I touch here, it's going here. So you see the output of those capacitors, then it's going everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. So that's your main power. Now you last, sorry, okay, but I have a motherboard and the capacitor is beeping on the both sides. That's actually the best case scenario. Uh, kind of, kind of. I mean, your main power really shorted. And on that case, if you have this configuration with two MOSFETs, and from the, the output of the second MOSFET, uh, you can find the short here. I mean, that's mean your main power rail is shorted, and then you can find the short on the current resistor, or the output of the MOSFET, the same thing, it should be with the ground, right? Now, this is the case, or actually you can, uh, you can play with the power supply, but it's very dangerous. And I'll explain why, because many people confuse, you know, confuse the, the distal two MOSFETs with these two MOSFETs. They will say, oh, no, no, this, this is my first MOSFET and the second MOSFET. And the only way, and I told you, the only way to, to, to actually figure it out, the input circuit, yeah, is the plus of the charging port, it will always beep only with your first MOSFET. Oh, it's not beeping here. Yeah, this one. So you see, actually, this one is my first MOSFET, and this one is my second one, and after that, I have the current sensor. Always and only the first MOSFET it will beep with the charging port. So you find the you find the first MOSFET, then the next MOS, the second MOSFET is here. Now you will see on the cheap laptops, cheap low power MOSFETs. You'll also find this configuration, but instead of the first MOSFET, you have a diode. Yeah. Uh, and the reason why is there is to stop the, the, the charging voltage, the battery voltage to goes out to the charging port. Yeah. On the, your main power rail, you will also find the battery voltage. So if you unplug the charger, then there you will have the battery voltage. So instead of the MOSFET, because the board is not taking that much power, they can use a diode. Yeah. So you have a diode, and you have the second MOSFET, and that's the input circuit. Okay. Good. It's nearly over one hour. Uh, I will stop this video. This was only about the input circuit and how we can find the main power rail. Yeah. On the next video, we're gonna find out how we can uh, find the 3.3 volts uh, power supply, and uh, we're gonna go around the IO chip. Okay. It's very important. Your feedback is important. So let me comment. Yeah, if you don't understand, because it's hard for me to see what you don't understand. Just leave me a comment and tell me what you don't understand, and I will explain you on the next video. Thank you for watching, and uh, see you on the next one. Bye.